It's here! Well guys, I've been waiting for months and months and the GoPro Hero 7 is finally here. Guys, I'm so excited this just came in. And just to be clear, this is not a product review video. There's tons of those already out that you've probably already seen. What I wanna focus on specifically is the Hyper Smooth. Is it worth it? Is it gimbal-like? And how does it perform with hyperlapses? So this video is gonna be all about hyperlapses, tips and tricks on how to get the best performance using your GoPro Hero 7 to make some really awesome hyperlapses. All right, let's get going. Okay, so guys, before we get going with hyperlapses, I'm gonna show you some side-by-side -side comparisons of the GoPro Hero 5 versus the GoPro Hero 7. Just to give you guys a quick example of how drastic a difference is to have this hyper smooth versus just in stabilization. All right, I'm gonna go do some walking tests. Here we go. All right, this is just me walking. I've got this stand on a stick which helps uh, stabilize it a little bit better than just hand holding the camera. And as I'm looking at both of these uh, LCD screens, you can tell the Hyper Smooth is just taking out all the bumps, while the GoPro Hero 5 is just absorbing all those bumps and translating that into the video. I'm going to leave all this footage uncolor graded. This is just coming straight out of the camera with no post processing. All right, do a quick example of uh, what it'd be like if I was talking to you on a selfie stick. Oh boy, there's two lenses. I don't know which one to talk to. Ah! Now I'm gonna do a test doing the hyperlapse on the Black 7, and then on the Black 5, I'll just speed up the raw recording. Okay, so as you can see here, the GoPro Hero 5 footage is just totally unusable. If you put this in your video, oh, I don't know what to say. I would never put this in one of my videos. The GoPro Hero 7, on the other hand, very smooth very stable um there's still a little bit of distortion but overall definitely usable all right well that gives you guys a pretty good example of just the huge contrast between stabilization on the five versus the seven and the five and six on stabilization same thing the seven is where it takes a huge leap so i'm gonna go ahead and disassemble this uh double stand taking just the hero seven so i can really concentrate on keeping it steady and see how i can really perfect the results and then don't worry my tips and tricks are coming right up all right, so now I just got this thing mounted on a little handheld stick. So now I'm gonna test out the theory if it's better to do it handheld without the stick or if it's better to do it with the stick and if the results are any different and if you should consider picking up a stick uh, for these hyperlapses. So I'm gonna do two hyperlapses, do that same lap, one with the stick and then one just holding it like this as I walk without the stick. So let's see which one's better. I'm only viewing this on this small little two inch LCD screen, but what I can tell is handheld walking with a very loose grip and hard step, I might add. I'm not bending my knees. I'm kind of just taking heavy, normal steps as if I'm not carrying the GoPro. And the results are as good as the first one I took. So now I'm curious to see if uh, I can smooth out some of those corners a little bit uh, by having this on the stick. I'm gonna hold this with a loose three finger grip so it'll kind of take out a lot of the steps and bouncing as I walk, and we'll see if this is the best result for getting a really smooth hyperlapse. Okay, so the results from my fourth lap around the RV park are really good. It's really going to show how consistent the GoPro is, whether it's a grip like this, a loose grip like this, or the dual wheel grip with the other GoPro on top. They're all producing very similar results. A couple warp, a couple sharp turns here and there, um, but overall, just super impressed. I mean, I'm just walking, handheld. It's insane that it can be that smooth. So I tried a bunch of different grips, but what if you had access to a bike or a unicycle? So uh, I'm gonna make another lap around and then see if I can't get this video even smoother. So 
So yet again, some very impressive results. Obviously it was faster because I was riding on the unicycle, which goes a lot faster than me walking. So now I've tried a unicycle and I'm kind of curious what it would be like in a car. So I'm gonna go pick up my little sister from her cross country running practice and uh, do a test on a car hyperlapse. Okay, so I'm not gonna make you guys watch this whole trip into town as it's like a minute long, but here are kind of the highlights of the trip. Thought it'd be valuable to show you guys uh, what it would look like the GoPro 7 mounted on the car uh, for a road trip you might be taking. All right, and that's what a car hyperlapse looks like. And uh, picking up my little sister from uh, ski practice, let's go try out another type of hyperlapse. Okay, so so far I've just been trying to figure out the best way to hold this thing and uh, just seeing how awesome the results are. Now I'm gonna get into a little bit more dynamic hyperlapsing where you're actually moving, tracing a subject, kind of doing half arcs, maybe full circle around a building or a sculpture or you know whatever you're filming. I've got this big building right up here and I'm gonna use that as my test subject and do a couple different approaches to it all while slowly, gradually moving and seeing what comes of it. Well guys, I got a pretty good sample of some test footage and testing of the hyperlapse. So now I'm gonna go inside, cause it's fall time in Alaska, I'm starting to get cold. I uh, go inside of my office and give you guys a breakdown of the tips that you'll want when you go out making hyperlapses with this GoPro Hero 7. Let's do it. All right guys, back inside. Man, the day I got the GoPro was definitely not the best day for filming. It was pretty uh, cloudy and dreary out, but you know, I had to get the video out as soon as possible because some of you guys probably are also getting the GoPro in right now at this same time and you'll want to be knowing uh, how to make a cool hyperlapse. So on the GoPro to film a hyperlapse, you'll tap the screen, swipe left, then tap on the time lapse setting. From there, just pick the favorite settings that you would like. And that brings me to my first tip. Make sure you're in the right ratio. When I started filming on this GoPro, it was in four by three and it was shooting only at 1080. And I thought that was the max I could do for a hyperlapse, but I switched the ratio from four to three to 16 by nine. That way I could film in 4K instead of 1080. So definitely want to make sure you've got those settings right because I'm pretty sure that was the default setting. And on to tip number two. The faster the hyperlapse, the better and smoother the video is going to turn out. So there's different hyperlapse speeds. You can start at two times speed, five times speed, 10 times speed, 15, and then 30 times speed. Your most stable and smooth product is going to be at 30 times speed. And that's because GoPro has more frames to analyze and smooth out your footage. So on the other hand, the shakiest results you'll get is from two times speed. But the whole thing about a hyperlapse is that you're speeding up time. So why would you want to speed up time to only two times? Like, why not do it 30 times? It's not nearly as cool to see people walk by at two times speed versus 30 times speed. People, clouds, cars, it's gonna be way cooler to see them whipping by instead of just going by twice as fast. So bottom line, it's gonna be cooler and more stable. So when you can, film at 15 times speed or preferably 30 times speed. And tip number three, I would suggest having a handle for your GoPro. Just walking around like this is not gonna produce as good of results if you have it mounted on top of a handle. Don't get me wrong, it is doable. I did walk around like this and get fine results, but I think you're gonna be more consistent and not turning left and right as you're walking in a straight line if you have it on a stick with a firm grip. The selfie stick extends out to a nice length. It's also carbon fiber, so it's really strong and durable, yet lightweight. And one bonus that I really like about this is that it floats with the GoPro on it. So if you're into water sports and you're doing cliff diving or waterboarding or water skiing or I <laughs> don't waterboard, yikes. Um, anyway, it'll float if you drop it in the water, so that's awesome. And if you want this very selfie stick, make sure you click the link in the description to buy it from Amazon. So tip number four, the best result that I could come up with is walking in a straight line or walking backwards in a straight line. Now walking backwards can be challenging in some spots, so I didn't get the best results walking backwards, but walking straight was the best. 
And then also, if that's your goal is just to have a straight hyperlapse, getting on a bike and riding in that straight line um, is going to be pretty smooth for your hyperlapse. But the thing is, as more people pick up these GoPro Hero 7s, everyone's going to be making hyperlapses and you're going to want to stand out somehow. If you're just making another straight hyperlapse, everyone's just going to tune out. whoop de doo So to stand out, start practicing panning up as you walk forward. So if your subject's off in the distance, you can start by looking at the ground and then slowly bring that GoPro up as you approach that building. Now remember, you wanna do this incredibly gradually. If I start here, I don't wanna be facing up for like five more minutes if you're doing it times 30 speed. So you just gotta remember that you wanna just do slow, 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 slow until you get up closer to your subject. So everything's gotta be incredibly gradual because you're filming such a fast speed. Another technique for a different type of hyperlapse is to rotate your GoPro as you walk by your subject. So I did that with that big red building. As I walked by, I kept it in frame and I tried to put a point on the building on my rule of thirds line. Now I don't actually have a rule of thirds line on my GoPro, but I tried to keep the corner of the building on that rule of thirds line and that really helps keep your footage much more stable if you're not constantly moving that corner of the building around because then it's going to start warping your footage. So if you can try and keep that corner of your subject in the same part of the screen as you slowly rotate your GoPro as you walk by. Another cool thing to spice up your hyperlapses would be to walk through a doorway. So as you come up to a building, just keep on walking towards that doorway and then you can mask out that doorway and send your next hyperlapse on through it and it can really make for a cool transition. Okay guys, now tip number five, my final tip is to use these hyperlapses to tell your story. Simply posting your hyperlapse because it's cool is gonna get boring pretty quick. How can including a hyperlapse in your story or film help your audience better understand what you're trying to convey to them? Hyperlapses are great, for example, to tell the audience that time has moved. So it works as a great transition sequence from a day to a day or from a location to a location. If your story has a location change or a day change, throwing in a couple hyperlapses will make sense. It'll help convey the time change to your audience. So don't just use it to use it. Have a purpose behind it. And that goes with all the filming that you do. Don't just pick up the camera and point and shoot. Have a story that you're trying to tell and show your audience and be intentional with your camera. Well guys, that pretty much wraps up this video. I've only had this GoPro for two days and that is definitely not enough time to thoroughly put this thing to the test and get some really awesome hyperlapses with it. Do got a couple big upcoming gigs for Martin Media, my video production business, and I'll be taking this guy out on the shoots with me to add a couple different twists to the story and uh, have a little bit more dynamic feel to my videos. In the near future, I'll be making a follow-up video to this one to keep improving your hyperlapse game with some more tips. And if you haven't bought the GoPro Hero 7 yet and you're wondering what I think about it, yes, definitely buy it. The stabilization in this thing, game changer. And so if you haven't bought the GoPro Hero 7 yet, I'd really appreciate you buying it from my Amazon affiliate link. I'm just a small YouTuber. I haven't made any money from AdSense yet on YouTube. And so it would really mean a lot if you go out of your way to click on that link and uh, help me out with that small commission that I get from the sale. Well, people of YouTube, thanks so much for watching the very end of this video. I really appreciate it. Uh, subscribe if you're not already. Like this video. Comment below any questions you might have about hyperlapses or the GoPro Hero 7. I'll do my best to answer them right away. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video.